Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with various wind. Here I'm playing all the holes from the second tee, giving you my best advice on how to crush the specific course that we are playing. But before we have a closer look at all the content, if you enjoy the free content here on the channel, hit the thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel and click that bell button or the notification button. For those of you that are looking to take that little extra step, you shall look for our premium guides on patreon.com slash golf clash tommy you have the link in the description down below or you can scan the qr code there we do have packages that ranges from for all the different type of players in golf clash all from tournaments to tour play to checkpoint challenge you can find something regardless what game mode you uh, want to improve uh, on you sign up, you try for yourself, and you see how we can help you become a better player in Gold Clash. Last but not least, in this playthrough, you can follow along by following the info box on the right hand side. Club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind, those are just suggestions, so you don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but there's a plan behind it. Let's go to hole number one. For hole number one, you will see two type of plays. One where we do go aggressive, trying to get to the green area uh, uh, with our drive, and one where we do lay up. And I would say if we do have a tailwind, you should always try to push for green. And the reason for that is that uh, laying up is still having its difficulties. And you will notice that when we take a look at that option. Playing with extra mile, as I do value power over uh, the big topper that do have more top spin. And you can see here now that uh, with the tailwind that we're having, we will be having like an extended ball guideline, which obviously will help. Max plus 10 is the adjusting that we should, should make. Now I'm being a little bit lazy, just leaving my target at the max line. And in the end, being lazy means that I'm being lucky. And the ball rolls, and even though we hit that rock, it rolls down and we are by the green. And it can't really be uh, simpler than that. The wedge here now, the only recommendation I really have here is to leave the ball guideline just right or left of the pin, depending on what wind direction you have. If you have a wind coming right to left, then leave the ball guideline just right of pin. There's no need to do any specific adjustment. Obviously, playing with a wedge that you have a good ball guideline is definitely recommended. But if we do not have a tailwind, or if you do not have any... Um, any club to be able to attack uh, towards the green, then pay close attention to the layup. For the layup, now we're going to play down the center of the fairway. We're gonna play in between the bushes, and here I would say doing a perfect ball is going to be very important here. I would say a great ball would definitely have its chances to get down there nicely, but as we're play playing in between the two bushes, there will always be a risk of clipping it especially if doing something wrong. Max plus 10 is the adjustment, and we're going to slightly push up here in the end, just because we do only play with a power two ball. You can obviously play with a power three ball as well, but the issue with that is that it's going to put you in even worse position in between clubs as we are getting here with a power two ball. You see, we bounce and we roll down the fairway, getting it very close to the rough line. You need to have in mind here that this fairway slopes left to right. So the more we aim right, the worse it's going to be. So what, the reason I'm using all the left spin here is to try to counteract the push the slope will give us once we get to the fairway. Now, you can see here now that we are not in a really good position. We are still an in-between club situation. And here you need to quickly make a call. Either you play a short iron, then you place 10% elevation. Then you can go for a dunk or you can go for a max backspin shot. Or you play a wedge and when playing a wedge like this you're going to have to obviously increase the elevation it's EB school plus 20 that we're playing here but it needs to play way more and you will obviously see that on this result here so we might should have played this one plus 40 or maybe even plus 50 uh, to be accurate with that wedge it's a shit wedge just to be completely honest with you but it's to display at least uh, what we do um, get ourselves after a drive trying to lay up on hole one but it is recommended to send it if we do have a tailwind otherwise again lay up
Hole number two, you will see me switch amongst all my bags. And why am I doing that? It's because I'm looking to see if I'm having the Grizzly combined with the Sniper. Because I'm looking to find complete min line. And you uh, trying to find complete, complete min line, you would be better off to actually having a long iron that has less than 135 yards of power. Because then you have that firm min line, then it's not going to flicker over to the Goliath like it's doing here. Half of the blue ring inside the rough, aiming right side of the pin, and adjust its minimum distance with a 15% over adjustment. Send to the ball, hit perfect, and we're gonna see yourself having a good chance for a drop here. There is a rough bump to be played as well, but the difference between Phantom Mansion and the Chateau Lavande, as it's called when it's bright, is that the rough bump has a very glitchy ball guideline and it's very hard to follow so bouncing on the fairway is definitely going to be a little bit more sufficient than it would be if we would be playing uh, playing the Chateau Lavande instead of the Phantom Mansion. Hole number three here we should do our very best to try to get over to the second fairway. Why? It's because if we can't get over there, we do not have a chance for an albatross at all, because then we're going to only have to play for a safe eagle. And that's boring. That's not really what we're doing here. So we are gonna push this drive. We're going to play this one, not max plus 10. We're gonna change that because we're going to play this one max plus 20, because it's a fairly downhill drive and I'm using a power three ball here as well. Now, you may think here, why do you use a power 3 ball where and max OP? Why not use a ball with more power? Good question and good thinking. Because here, obviously, playing with a ball with more power will allow you to play with less overpower and it's going to be easier. But as we're keeping the play through free to play, uh, I'm keeping myself with a power 3 ball. Max plus 20, adjustment, push up to max, and I'm using max overpower. Second uh, shot, now we're gonna play a rough bomb, and this one looks easier than what it is. Why? It's because, not why, but how come I say that? It's because here now, we are going to adjust from a higher to a lower point. And what that means is that we're going to have our first bounce to be further back into the rough. So in a scenario like this, I would recommend to either aim higher up to start with, like by the rough line, or push up after the adjustment. Because you can see here now that I'm going from a higher to a lower point, and you can see that even if I'm going a push up here by half a ring, I'm still not coming in with a good speed. I'm still landing further back than where I aimed. So that is something you need to think about when playing this shot, because now I'm going short in line, and that's truly the worst thing you can do because that means that you're not even giving yourself a chance to drop this shot. Hole number four. Here I'm starting with a mauling to find absolute max line with my sniper. This is an idea of just trying to be a little bit more what can I say, to be a bit more consistent and clear with my landing spot. Also looking at the ball guideline to go through the hole with the spins applied. Swapping to a win four ball, and we're going to make an adjustment that is max plus 25. The 25% elevation is not something we will use in all winds. It all depends on what type of wind we have. And in headwind, it's common that we are adjusting more than normal. This due to the fact that the headwind is compressing the ball guideline and we need to compensate based off that. Center the ball and hit perfect and this ball will be around the hole but this is not an easy par 3 to drop consistently especially due to the nature of the green that is a little bit bumpy and it slopes a little bit here and there. One thing to have in mind though is that don't come in too hot. If you come in too hot you might roll uh, down into the rough or into the sand because it's a very steep downhill patch just by the end of the green. Take your game to the next level with our ultimate tournament text guide for the Gathered Souls and Nine Hole Cup. This is for Master Division that we do provide, uh, provide the ultimate tournament text guides. We are going to have extreme wins for this Nine Hole Cup, which is a 
terrible modifier makes it much more difficult, but it also gives those of you having our guides a massive advantage over others because the drops will be way more rare and mistakes will come more often and that is exactly what a guide will do for you. We will provide free to play ball options and pay ball options so make sure to check that out. Scan the QR code on the screen or go directly to patreon.com slash goldclashtom. If you do not want to commit for 30 days, you can do a one-time purchase. We do recommend the 30-day commitment as it's much cheaper and gives you also a more content. If any questions, you email support at goldclashtom.com. Last but not least, the, sorry, the exclusive tour shootout guide for tour 7 to tour 13 are up and running as well. Make sure to check them out and improve your tour gameplay today as well. Hole number five is one of the easier holes of the Phantom Mansion. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use a three top spin, two left spin. And now we're going to aim uh, to be practically centered into the rough line and uh, pointing towards the fairway. Adjust is max, no elevation, P5 numbers. We're pushing up to max, then we shall apply max overpower. And the goal here now with this type of shot is to get over to the final part of fairway. 0 0.8 ball of left curl. And uh, here I'm using, not using, I'm hitting a great right is what I'm trying to say. You can hit great left, you can hit perfect, you can hit great right, and the ball will still be over on the fairway. The only thing we don't want to do is to roll into the rough or sand at the top there. So we do want to stay on the fairway to allow us to have a very good chance for a drop. Now, you need to make a decision here. Either you're playing the short iron, then obviously you're going to have to play with a decent bunch of backspin, or you're playing the wedge. I personally would prefer the short iron the reason why to that is because I believe that's easier to control because the wedge would be a lot of rings as we are so far away uh, from max distance with our wedge. So i rather than take uh, min uh, short iron than the wedge. 10% elevation with the wedge, uh, leaving obviously the ball guideline into the hole when it comes to the backspin we are applying. And luckily we do have a good ball guideline. Bounces on the green. Rolls up, I'm getting it to drop dead center for a lovely eagle here on hold 5. Hole number 6 is most definitely the toughest par 5 in this tournament, but also the toughest hole in the tournament overall. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use all the top spin here, which is 4.5 bars, and some right spin. Stretch out to max to see the ball guideline bounce on the fairway. Adjust max plus 10, push up to max, and then we will apply max overpower with half a ball of right curl. What needs to be said though is that you don't have to play with an extra mile here. We would like to play with the, it would, the driver that gives us the most power because that will simplify the drive and allow us to get the ball far up on the fairway so we can play with our sniper. Because the sniper here, with its ball guideline, is truly a big thing in terms of attacking the pin. I'm using left spin combined with some back spin, leaving the ball guideline short of pin because we do have a slight tailwind and then we do have an extended ball guideline to compensate for, so we have to do that. Sure, you can go for a rough bump as well, but the rough bump is definitely aggressive and you're gonna have to practice that one a couple of times to know that with a perfect ball you will hit that rough because if you don't hit that rough then you're gonna be in the rough on the back of the green by uh, as you will have to use top spin to reach towards the hole aiming for the rough bump ah i mean a lot of things to have in mind there 40 percent elevation in true club distance so check where max club are check where min club are and if you are lucky like i am here in the video you bounce on the fairway up towards the green and we're getting it to drop for a big bonus albatross on hole six On hole number seven, we're playing a very aggressive line. The reason for that is that I do believe this is going to be the best chance for us to consistently attack and drop a hole in one. If you're not interested in an aggressive route like this, you can always uh, back up and bounce on the fairway before the rough line instead. Sure, the hole in one won't be that common, but it will be a safe birdie. 
Now, looking at the inner ring to be just by the bunker, ball guideline slightly short of pin. Have in mind again, we're having a tailwind, ex extended ball guideline, and therefore we need to compensate with that by leaving the ball guideline short. Maximum distance with a 25% elevation. A perfect ball here and also greats will hit the rough. That's no issues with that. Obviously, you have to center the ball properly. You can't have a wonky pull angle. Then obviously those, of th those things will be, um, be dangerous uh, with a shot like this. But we're getting a nice hole in one here on hole seven. For hole number eight here we're gonna go for an eagle obviously what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use uh, a titan ball and we're gonna land ourselves over on uh, the fairway pad the second fairway island the thing here is that we can play with the rock but you can see in the info box that i do recommend the extra mile why it's because of the headwind if we do have a headwind it is kind of stupid to play with the rock as even if it has a good accuracy and a good ball guideline will most likely pull us into a max club and then we're going to have to compensate with overpower and as the rock doesn't have um a top spin that is more than extra mile again there is no point so play with extra mile the thor Sammer, or the apocalypse instead of having to go with overpower uh, with the rock bouncing on the fairway over the rough line is what we're going to do regardless what driver we're playing with and try to be consistently around 310 yards second shot we're playing with our grizzly or with a b52 it kind of doesn't really matter but what matters is that we do want to have a good accuracy so i'm using two right spin and the ball guideline to go through the hole you can see here i'm going approximately three green squares as we do have a headwind we're gonna play we are not gonna play with a negative elevation it's only when we do have crosswind and when we do have tailwind is that we're gonna play with a negative elevation because when it comes to a headwind we're gonna pull from a higher to a lower point and what happens is that we're gonna lose and lose and lose more distance the more we pull so therefore we're playing with 20% elevation here in headwind and that's why I chose this video as well as I think it displays my point pretty good because now we bounce into the rough and we're rolled down and getting it to drop dead center for a lovely eagle here on hole number eight for hole number nine i do see the most value in playing down the left hand side especially when we do have like an in-between wind like this where we have a little bit of tailwind but mainly crosswind that's the same if having headwind if we do have um what can I say? If we do have a tailwind, we can at least think about playing on the middle island to bounce over there to leave ourselves a short iron towards the pin instead. I'm using the big topper as it has a lot of topspin because if we're going to play left, we're going to have to have a lot of topspin. Otherwise, the second shot is just going to be a shot to secure the eagle, but we want to push for an albatross. Max plus 10 is the adjustment and the ball rolls nicely down the fairway. And we are in a brilliant position here now to get ourselves a nice shot towards the Albatross. So you can see here now we're playing the rough bump because truly, I mean, if we're going to play on the fairway, it's going to be a lot of backspin. And that's just going to be a messy. So what I'm using is that I'm using the white ring to be by the bunker and the white ring to be by the rough line. And then applying spins but you can also see that there are some glitchy spots there. So I have to move my position a little bit higher up. And instead of the white ring, I'm using the blue ring in the end where, I, where I'm able then to find a much better consistency with my ball guidelines. So always be prepared to adapt for shots like this because we do not want to play in a glitchy spot because that could risk uh, make the ball just uh, cruise over the green into the rough or just go short. And then, I mean, then the Albatross attempt is, is obviously gone. 20% elevation, true club distance, all depends on if you are, you know, medium or maximum distance. And in this instance, I'm making the right call. It bounces into the rough, rolls down onto the green, and we're dropping this one for a lovely albatross on hole nine. 